Welcome to KetoMealsAndRecipes.com. Today I'm demonstrating how to make Gimpop, also referred to as Kimpop. I will be describing a traditional preparation method which I adapted to be keto, sugar-free, and grain-free. Replacing sushi rice and seasoning in making this fully compliant recipe will have you again enjoying this popular Korean food. I also think you will be very pleased with how this Kali rice mixture is very satisfying and has a great mouthfeel and texture. The macronutrient ratio for this recipe is 2 to 1 with 8.4 grams of total carbs per serving. The recipe also has 1.3 grams of soluble and 1.1 grams of insoluble fiber with a total of 6 grams of net carbs per serving. Before starting to assemble the gim pop, you need to make the Kali rice. I have found that the best way to make the Kali rice for this recipe is by using my oven method which I explained in detail in the start of the cauliflower three ways video. I prefer this method because the Kali rice is not watery and has the right balance between being moist and dry. The link will be provided at the end. I strongly encourage you to use a kitchen scale to weigh all the ingredients. You will need 700 grams of oven Kali rice and you'll need to completely cool this to room temperature before using. Then weigh the cream cheese. To get the best results, purchase a good quality wild, cold water caught smoked salmon. You will need to purchase Dan Muji, which is absolutely required for gimbap. My Korean friends tell me that without Dan Muji, which is made from pickled daikon radish and has a complex, sweet, salty, and sour taste, this is not gimbap. The next part of the prep is to make your omelette. For the omelette, I use four whole large eggs with a teaspoon of water. I whisk this together gently to make a smooth egg mixture. I preheated a nonstick pan and used coconut oil to lubricate the pan. Then I poured the egg mixture onto the pan and tilted it so that the entire surface was completely covered with the egg. After a minute or two, when the surface of the omelette is starting to look done, start rolling it up. Remove it from the pan and let it cool completely before cutting it into wide strips ready for the assembly process. I also used the nonstick pan and dry roasted the raw sesame seeds, just to the point where you can smell the wonderful aroma of roasted sesames, and only to the light golden color stage. Remove immediately and place onto a cool plate so that the seeds don't keep cooking. At this point, the oven kali rice should be completely cool. Sprinkle the roasted sesame seeds over the entire surface. Don't just dump it in. Pour the tamari over the kali rice and also sprinkle the sweetener. And making sure that the cream cheese is soft and at room temperature, add it to the bowl and add the roasted sesame seed oil. Use your hand to massage and squeeze all the ingredients until all the ingredients, especially the cream cheese, are evenly distributed and mixed with the Kali rice. Set this prepared Gimpop Kali rice mix aside. Next I'm going to demonstrate how to blanch the long stem fresh spinach. You will need a medium sized pot half filled with water which you have brought to a brisk boil. You should also have a bowl of ice water beside the stove. Put the raw spinach into the boiling water Push the spinach leaves underwater with your tongs and blanch for only one minute. Use the tongs and remove the spinach from the boiling water and immediately place into the ice water bath. This will stop the cooking process and also give the spinach that nice deep green color. Drain well and let it cool. Then squeeze out as much water from the spinach as you can. If you don't like spinach or don't want to go through this blanching step, Substitute the spinach with strips of English cucumber. Now for the carrots. The traditional way to prepare the carrots, which I admit look much better, is to first cut fairly thin diagonal sections and then cut these sections into matchsticks. And then you saute the matchsticks for a couple minutes in an unflavored oil such as grapeseed. I usually do this step, but I do have to admit that when I was filming this video, I took a shortcut and just peeled and sauteed the whole carrot and then cut the whole carrot into long strips. Either technique will work. After preparing the carrot, set it aside. Here I'd like to share another helpful trick. To keep your bamboo mat clean and easier to use, place it inside a zippy freezer bag, then use it as usual. The sheet of nori, 
A sushi grade sheet of seaweed has two distinct sides. Place the shiny side down and the rough side facing up. Weigh about 100 grams of prepared gimbap kali rice. Place it on the nori on the end nearest to you. Then spread the kali rice to both sides of the nori sheet, but stop at about 5 centimeters or 2 inches from the top. At the end closest to you, at about the 2.5 centimeter or 1 inch point, place the two strips of pre cut omelette as shown. Then your carrot, the yellow pickled radish, 1 seventh of the total drained blanched spinach. Spread it evenly from side to side, or you can replace the spinach with the cucumber as mentioned earlier. And the last thing I add is the pre weighed smoked salmon. Again, spread evenly from side to side. To roll this all together, lift the mat and while also holding onto the nori, roll away from you. Because the kali rice is not as sticky as the sushi rice, I find it a good practice to gently press along the length of the bamboo mat at every half turn. This will compact the ingredients nicely. Keep rolling and pressing gently until you get to the end of the kali rice. Then stop here. Dip your fingers in some water and lightly dampen the last 5 centimeters or 2 inches of nori and then right away finish rolling the gimbap. Again squeeze gently along the length of the roll. Remove the mat and gently place the gimbap seam side down on your plate. Repeat the assembly and rolling process until you have made all 7 gimbap rolls. To cut this roll into individual bite sized pieces use a very sharp knife. You can either start at one end and cut eight even sections from each roll, or make the first cut in the middle, then cut each of the two sections in the middle again, and lastly cut each section into half. Just remember to wipe the blade frequently with a wet cloth. This will make your cuts cleaner and you will have less tearing of the nori. A nice way of presenting it is to put the end cuts in the center and the other sections all around. This presentation will look like a flower with its stamen and petals and will look very nice. Or if you prefer, you can plate onto individual plates. I hope you give this recipe a try. It's really quite an easy recipe to make and assemble. Don't be intimidated. Just have fun making it and enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. The link for the printed recipe is available in the description below.